Your dad's teammate's ex-wife, bruh? Really? Welcome to Waters Under the Bridge with me, Reese Waters, where I grade the last 30 some odd days we just had in hopes I can foster and promote a little gratitude. You know, when the times were good, but also give you a place to commiserate our collective garbage experience. Don't forget to like and share the video and give me your score in the comments below. And also, if you have any personal moments of triumph or misery, I'll take those under advisement as well. Let's get to November. What's the... Snoop quit smoking? Oh, word. Oh, oh, it was a publicity stunt for a smokeless stove and fire pit campaign? Okay, all right. No reason to better ourselves then. Well, maybe November's greatest gift was the George Santos House Ethics Report. You can't take that one back. That ultimately served as his undoing, but that would actually technically happen in, in December. The report says that there was substantial evidence that Santos stole money from his campaign and used connections to wealthy donors to enrich himself. The details allege Santos spent campaign funds on Botox treatments, designer goods, lavish trips with his husband, and subscriptions to OnlyFans. You heard that right, Botox and OnlyFans. When George Santos wasn't trying to fix his face, he was getting his fix of smut. This guy is an overachiever and an underachiever at the exact same time. How you good enough scammer to get elected to Congress while also being this messy? The report said he deceived donors into providing what they thought were contributions to his campaign but they were in fact for his personal benefit. It also alleges that Santos reported hundreds of thousands of dollars in fictitious loans to his campaign and then repaid himself with real money. Man, they about to send your boy to prison prison. He's gonna have a cell in the fraudulent hall of fame right next to Dr. Love, the guy who practiced medicine without a license, then scammed his way back to prison once he got out. Only, only he could match George Santos. And I also love that the report mentioned Sephora and OnlyFans by name. It's like they were saying his face was beat to the gods while he was getting beat to the gods. Was that the line? Was that the line? Look, I'm just reporting on Congress's reporting. But the funniest thing about all of this to me is that whenever reporters asked Santos questions about the allegations, he got snippy with them. Like he's not the one accused of taking people's money. He all but said, how dare you ask me about the crimes I committed to get this job. But November also gave us election day and with this came the most invisible red wave of this millennia. Democrats achieved key victories in several key states, including Ohio, Virginia, and Kentucky. And Ohio, to name one, approved a referendum enshrining abortion access in the state constitution, marking a significant victory for pro-choice advocates in the wake of the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade. But all is not lost, GOP. November's GOP primary debate Gave us something I never expected to see at one of those. And no, I know what you're thinking. Not Donald Trump. He still won't show up to debate. I'm talking about brown on brown crime. And it was savage. Nikki Haley and Vivek Ramaswamy went after each other like some South Asian Highlanders. There can only be one. Vivek called Nikki Haley corrupt multiple times, which is rich coming from a pharma bro running for president. He even held up a handwritten sign that said that Nikki is corrupt. Man, Vivek, bro, you are way too rich for handwritten signs. Come on, man, get your people to print up something on Canva or Photoshop. Even I could do that and I only got like $15. Ramaswamy also called Haley old in a very backhanded way. Nikki Haley, for her part, responded by saying Ramaswamy is jealous and that her donors don't want anything to do with him. She also said that he has a woman problem. And I'll be honest, that one is pretty believable because he looks like he disappoints women often. Then Haley said, that's why your mama don't even like you. All right. Okay. I, I, I added the mom insult. That was that that was me. And the November debate, Haley did call him scum for bringing up her daughter, which I guess I can understand. You bring up somebody's family and the gloves are off. As you can see from that make-believe mama joke that I added, which fit quite nicely with all the real stuff. Things have been getting spicy on that stage, and I promise that's 
not a joke about Indian food. Maybe I just should have said petty or intense. Either way, whatever won't get me canceled on accident. This is very entertaining to me because neither one of them, and I mean neither one of them, stands a chance. Unless Trump somehow gets convicted of a felony between now and November 2024, which appears less and less likely by the day. That trial won't start until next century if Trump has his way. Haley is the less desperate of the two, so it's interesting to watch them duke it out in a cobra versus mongoose kind of way, but you know, without all the bloodshed and death. More like a very passive aggressive cobra and mongoose battle, like some sort of cobra mongoose pillow fight. Now, as you may or may not have heard, the almost universally loved TikTok food reviewer Keith Lee made a visit to Atlanta to review their restaurant scene. And I said almost universally beloved because I know some of those restaurant owners are cussing the day Keith Lee was born right about now. Lee went to these restaurants unannounced and to say the service was janky would be disrespectful to the word janky. Lee went to multiple restaurants and dealt with all kinds of nonsense. Now, I do have some limited experience dining in Atlanta, but by most accounts, their restaurant scene mostly consists of unprofessionalism and vibes. ATLians, you guys let me know in the comments if this is true. Now, I know my last visit, my friends tried to lemon pepper wing me to death. Atlanta must be the lemon pepper capital of the earth, which there are worse things to be known for. That was everybody's go-to, that or my friends are ratchet, whichever is, that's a po real possibility. Keith Lee's somewhat tragic visit to Atlanta was the catalyst that launched an endless stream of think pieces on social media about black businesses and customer service. Now I feel conflicted because there are so many highly professional black restaurants out there and it's disheartening that some folks group them all together to give them a bad rap. That said, the basic and trifling ones deserve to be called out. People work too hard and inflation is too high for folks to be playing games with people's money. I need the food I ordered, the reservations I reservated, and don't give me an attitude for no reason. The only restaurants I'll accept rudeness from at this point, maybe a Jamaican restaurant. Jamaican ones, you can give me attitude because at Jamaican spots, the root of the service the better the food, that's just science. I don't know why that is, but it is. If they aren't yelling at you and telling you what they don't have as soon as you walk in the door, then I don't want it. But shout out to Keith Lee for trying to be as positive as possible when reviewing restaurants that wasted his time. He put every kind of glass half full spin on why the service and managers could have acted the way they did because he's compassionate. Wouldn't have been me though, I'll be honest, it wouldn't have been me. I'd have been on Yelp like a straight up Karen, typing phrases I don't say in real life. Well, I never, all caps. Shout out to all the restaurants out there treating their customers right. To the ones that aren't, you need to start. Or Keith Lee will roll up on your establishment like Omar and send folks running. The boogeyman ain't real, but Keith Lee is. So stop being raggedy or else. And finally, our national nightmare is over. Finally, Michael Jordan has made it clear he does not approve of his youngest son, Marcus, dating Larza Pippen, the ex-wife of Jordan's Hall of Fame teammate, Scottie Pippen. Now, if what you're doing is too petty for Michael Jordan, you're doing way too much. This is the guy that called out a dude from high school when he went to the Hall of Fame. This whole relationship screams, look at us. They might claim they're not doing this for attention, but you started a podcast together that nobody asked for. See, this is what happens when somebody who will never fill his father's massive footsteps connects with somebody who will never be a Kardashian no matter how hard she tries. Future generations are gonna have a field day examining the effects of social media, reality TV, and celebrity culture on this generation. And this chapter will be particularly messy. Your dad's teammate's ex-wife, bruh? Really? Your ex-husband's teammate's son? Really? Zero stars, do not recommend. Lastly, this month gave us more news and the Elijah McClain saga, and it wasn't good. Aurora, Colorado police officer Nathan Woodyard was acquitted in the 2019 death of Elijah McClain, a young black man who was killed after police stopped him on the sidewalk, forcibly restrained him, and paramedics injected him with ketamine. Now, Woodyard was the third officer to stand trial McClain's death and the second to be acquitted. The other acquitted former officer, Jason Rosenblatt, was fired from the police department in 2020 over a photo reenacting McLean's death. Because that's what this was to them, a cruel, tasteless joke. 
Only officer Randy Rodema was found guilty of criminally negligent homicide and third degree assault in McLean's case. He hasn't been sentenced yet, but there's no guarantee he'll actually see prison time for McLean's death. Though it looks like the same old, same old as far as the justice system holding officers to any kind of accountability for the deaths of innocent, unarmed black people. I, for one, am tired of it, and I thought maybe the rest of the world might be getting tired of it after all the protests in 2020. But here we are. Very little has changed, and it, for one, makes me sad. By the way, the paramedics who administered ketamine to McLean have pleaded not guilty. We'll see if a jury extends the same twisted grace to them as they did to these officers. Now, November also meant the passing of Rosalind Carter, the wife of former president Jimmy Carter. Her death was met with bipartisan grace and respect. November also gave us the passing of former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, which was met with hashtags and memes. The lesson in a world of Henry Kissinger's be Rosalind Carter. November, you were a hot mess, and I mean a hot mess, but you were very entertaining, and I'm not just saying that because Thanksgiving had me in the spirit of gratitude, but I do love ratchetry. November, you get a B.